Thank goodness you're finally awake. I have spent the past 30 minutes calculating the odds of you being indefinitely incapacitated or immobilized. I'm relieved to find my pessimism was misplaced and that you appear to be okay. Someone ambushed us at the apartment. After you collapsed, my power systems were jammed by whoever attacked us. It took me two minutes to reboot and call an ambulance. When we left, I noticed they had done the same thing to the NSFPD ROM that was standing post. It takes a lot of power to crash one of those, even temporarily. Serious military hardware like that is difficult to obtain, but that type of non-lethal electrical field would interrupt my systems as well. Likely a mil-spec neuro scrambler. I now believe my original hypothesis to have been correct. Hayden must have been kidnapped by a powerful organization looking to get control of his research. Crashing our apartment may have been a cover for the theft of the data cache we were looking for. If we walked in on them while they were searching the apartment for Hayden's files, I can understand them stunning us to make their escape. But the probability that they're actually after me, or rather the research behind my creation, seems high. Leaving me when I was so vulnerable makes no sense. A reasonable deduction. But if they don't yet have Hayden's research, we may still have time to rescue him before something really bad happens. No, I didn't. They assaulted us from behind, and nothing showed up on my optics before I was disrupted. They either had cloaking of some kind, or were extraordinarily careful while making their way into the apartment. My optics, while not top of the line, are better than an off-the-shelf ROMs, and I should have been able to detect any thermal changes from someone being there. Before I forget, here are your belongings. The nurses had me hold on to them for you until you awoke. Here's your ID card. Don't lose this again. Here are those headphones you reviewed. I noticed the article on your computer before. Good job getting published. Oh, and... Here's your spoiled milk. Luckily, the hospital staff didn't find your carrying of a carton of spoiled milk around to be a cause for concern. And finally, here's your commemorative glass of water that you got from Alfie. Looks like it got broken. Now all we have is this broken commemorative glass. Also, your bag got wet. You're right, you wouldn't want to cut yourself. Just let me know when you want to leave. Uh, excuse me. Are you talking about Hayden Weber? I think I recognize that voice, but I can't be sure.
I'm sorry. I'm afraid I can't do that. Sorry for being a nosy Nancy. Hayden's an old friend of mine, and this sounded all too familiar. Has anything happened to him? Of course, I've not yet introduced myself. My name is Dr. Yannick Fairlight. And I'm the founder and former CEO of System One Software, now owned by Parallax. He is telling the truth, at least as far as I can intuit from information on the MeshNet. And I do recall Hayden mentioning a Dr. Fairlight, at least once in passing at some point. See, I don't bite. I hate to be the one to tell you, but privacy screens are hardly soundproof. However, if this situation concerns us both, perhaps we can help each other. I won't press you for details, but perhaps I could be of some assistance, hmm? I remember my association with Hayden fondly, and I'd be happy to help in any way I can. Ah, uh, yes. As I've mentioned, Parallax acquired my company, System One Software. I accepted a CTO position, and additionally served on Parallax's board for several years. The other directors and I had a difference of opinion about the direction the organization should take. The non-centralized data scheme for most ROMs used today seemed ludicrous at the time. We were playing with fire, dangerous, morally ambiguous fire, and well, we hadn't invented a bucket of water. So when Parallax's servers were destroyed by hobbyist hackers, well, Needless to say, it was a PR nightmare. Everything halted until we could get the damage fixed. And since the security work that goes into maintaining the integrity of near-impenetrable mesh net is astronomically expensive, we had our share of disagreements. In the end, I was voted off the board and they went on without me. Do I have hard feelings? Of course, who wouldn't? In the end though, it really doesn't matter. I'm an old rich man with enough hobbies to last the next two decades. Hayden and I made our acquaintance when the two companies first underwent the merger. At the time, he was a young hotshot researcher working in the search data correlation sector. He was assigned to find the best ways to integrate Parallax's own collection and analysis tools into System One's LIPS operating system. He was a bit much to handle at times, honestly, but I admired his passion for the subject. His research? No, not so much. I remember at the time he had interest in advanced machine sapience, but that is the realm of science fiction. He once showed me a prototype of his. She was quite clever, very convincing, but you could tell she did not contain the spark of life. 
I assume that you are another of his creations. Yes, I am. I'm sorry, I didn't introduce myself. My name is Turing. Um, did you say she? Ah, yes. She was quite insistent on that fact over the course of my conversation with her. Hayden said that she had picked out the color for her casing herself. Pastel pink. Still, I must assume you are far more advanced than she, if you are spearheading the search for your creator. Perhaps I should have had more faith in Hayden's little hobby. Do you know what became of her, or where she might be now? Hayden has told me so little of his past research. I'm sorry, Turing. It was a long time ago, and I'm afraid my memory is not what it used to be. If any of my contacts in Parallax make mention of your uh, erstwhile sibling, I'll pass it on to you. Hmm. Thank you, Dr. Fairlight. Of course. Ask away. The chair you find me in is an advanced diagnostic and life support run. Its development is one of my hobbies, so to speak. It monitors my vitals and administers medications as necessary to keep my body stable. I likely would have perished long ago without it, or at least would have been severely bedridden. It requires frequent maintenance, and I'm here to have it examined. There's a particular fellow at this hospital who is the only one I trust to run the correct diagnostics and fine-tune things to my exact needs. It's the same way you might get your car serviced, making sure everything's in check. It's too integral to my health to count on just luck. Unfortunately, uh, many critically injured patients were rushed into surgery all at once. My appointment has been pushed back. The hospital administrators placed me here with a resting patient so as not to be disturbed by the chaos outside. I don't think they expected you to awaken quite as quickly as you did. Ah, I can think of a few ways. I still have some contacts in Parallax and can put out some quiet feelers. Maybe they'll know something. I will admit, I don't have much to offer until there's more information. Is there anything you can tell me? I'd like to help in any way I can. What did you find at Hayden's apartment? The first time we went, nothing. But when we went back to extract his computer's data cache... The place had been pillaged, and the human revolution had spray-painted slogans all over our walls! Hayden's computer was gone, and we were assaulted. And now we're here, injured and losing our trail with each passing second. We're still frustratingly in the dark and running out of time. I fear Hayden is slipping out of reach. I am failing him. I'm very sorry to hear that. I wish I could do more. Hayden's company was most enjoyable. and pauper alike. But right now, someone I grew very fond of is in great danger. I simply wish to see Hayden home again, safe. It's been very interesting speaking to you, Dr. Fairlight. I don't think we have any choice. If 
I'm looking into this on my own, you might as well benefit from it. We both want the same thing, yes? It's up to us to seize opportunity when it appears. I think I have a lead for you two that will prove most useful. You said you found human revolution slogans spray painted on the walls. I am acquaintances with the man leading the current human revolution protests at the Genus Clinic. His name is Brian Mulberry. After an introduction from me, he may be willing to shine some light on that particular event. Ah, well, when I exited Parallax, I sought out like-minded individuals. We worked together to prevent a full deployment of the MeshNet system. Brian Mulberry was one such person. We did not succeed in our efforts, obviously. Come to think of it, that event might have been what prompted Brian to take a more radical stance against technology. Ha. But yes, our motivations aligned for one brief time, and I gained his respect from it. Hopefully, that can be useful for you. No, no, not in this lifetime. Even if I so desired, I don't think they would approve much of my work. While Mr. Mulberry and I were associated with each other once, uh, it was before he joined the Human Revolution. I find their methodology too aggressive, and their stated goals dangerously backwards. While I pushed for careful deployment of technology after the Parallax System 1 merger, I am no caveman. After all, I'd likely be dead without the advanced technology that goes into this chair. I will send a message downstairs to my assistant, Leon Decker. He will hand you one of my cards to prove your association with me to Mr. Mulberry. Make sure you speak to him before you leave. In the meantime, I'll get in touch with some other individuals I know, and try to find out any other information about Hayden that I might be able to pass on to you. I'll be in contact. It was a pleasure meeting you both. Please, do not let me delay you any further. Good luck, Turing. I don't think Hayden's faith in you is misplaced. You are an impressive piece of technology. Thank you, Dr. Fairlight. We'll be in touch. Should I call downstairs to have you discharged? You are one lucky dog. Didn't I tell you to be careful? Do you get it now? I can't be around to pull your ass out of the fire all the time anymore. I don't even know how I would have handled the Board of Inquiry or your sister if you'd actually been hurt. I'm sorry, Detective Rivers. Our assailant got the drop on us due to my negligence and lack of technical prowess. This is all because of my failure. Blame me, it's my fault. Sure, because the robot fresh off the assembly line is going to know how to handle this kind of thing better than the supposedly hard-boiled journalist you're carting around. Well, to be honest... Detective Rivers, I think I'll tell you the whole truth, since my friend here trusts you. Keep it under your hat, though, metaphorically. I am no ordinary ROM actually a prototype designed to be the first fully sapient machine. I suspect creating me is the main factor behind Hayden's disappearance, beyond his day-to-day -day research for Parallax. My name is Turing. Whew. Okay. Hi, Turing. 
Well, that is a damn bigger problem than you first let on, huh, old pal? The first machine sapient. People are gonna have things to say about that. Especially the human revolution. Ugh. This is exactly what I wanted to avoid. You sure know how to get yourself dropped in the drink. Just get it together, both of you. I don't want you to get hurt, and it sounds like you're stumbling into a really dangerous situation. Plus, I'm starting to think that you were right. Someone higher up in the department is trying to delay any search into Hayden's disappearance. Here's the story. Apparently, the investigations you ran into this morning were about the lock on the apartment door being reported broken by a neighbor. The building couldn't reach Hayden, so they went ahead and got it fixed on their own, but the NSFPD sent a bot to check things out and guard the place for a while afterward, right? Standard procedure, treating it as a break-in. Have someone there for when Hayden shows up. Obviously, you and I know there's a bigger story, but when I filled out the missing person report, I was informed in no uncertain terms that I am to wait an entire 48 hours before I can upgrade the existing case. Why? Just on the off chance the door being busted and Hayden being missing are unrelated and my search screws something up for the completion of the break-in report. As if. There's a problem if you're so by the book you're getting paper cuts. And that was before all of this happened. The Chief's not happy about whoever took the bot out. That's who they're after now. They won't even care if Hayden never shows. Today's assault and the vandalization of our apartment will only make the entire situation more confusing and sensitive for the police. There's too many moving parts to piece anything together, and it's not fun trying to argue with the bureaucrats that one thing happened over another. These little incidents of smashing shit and spray paint sound more like Froyo Stand 2.0 to them than a serious abduction. And I suppose I won't be very useful as a witness to the kidnapping without explaining the makeup of my being to the entire department, which will only scandalize things further. Darn it all! Look, it's not being squashed completely, so I don't think anyone's been bought. But until there's undeniable proof Hayden was taken by force, they're gonna care more about the poor doorknob and some paint on the walls than him being missing. Which means somebody definitely has some influence, enough to buy themselves time by forcing me to follow protocol to a T. Not that I will, but I'm gonna have to keep things quiet. It sounds like it's going to be up to us. Yeah, so stop messing around. There's certainly a story here, but if you keep botching your moves, you'll blow it. I'd really rather you not be involved at all, but I know that isn't going to happen at this point. I've got a bad feeling people are going to end up dead over this. I don't want you to be one of them, buddy. And I really don't want to be the one making that call to your sister. Please. Yeah, yeah, I know. Here. Take this. Use it if you have to. It's not. This is a medium range electrolaser pistol. It uses a low power laser to create a channel of ionized gas to complete a circuit between the gun and the target, then discharges a considerable amount of current into the air. Think of it as a wireless taser of the older variety. This is a more suitable personal defense weapon, and it is legal to carry in the OSF without a license. The neural scrambler we were attacked with uses a powerful electromagnetic field to disrupt electrical signals in the target's nervous system. That's far more dangerous and prone to be permanently damaging to the target. You got lucky. I told you to get a weapon, but you didn't, so I picked it up on the way here. Be smart with it. Me either. I'll be in touch if I find anything out, but don't hold your breath. My superiors are gonna keep leaning on me to do nothing. Back to the grind, I guess. See ya. Stay safe. Thank you for your time, Detective Rivers.
should talk to the receptionist and formally check out before we go anywhere. We should also look for Dr. Fairlight's assistant, Mr. Decker. He should be somewhere around. Look, they have a passy machine. Patient, my records indicate that you have been admitted for possible cranial trauma. You should currently be in your assigned bed resting. While I am truly delighted to see that you have regained consciousness, I must insist that you return to your room to be examined by a medical professional immediately. I must insist that you remain for treatment. A doctor has not determined the full extent of your injuries, and you may have lasting damage to your nervous system. Very well. I am prohibited by law from detaining you here against your will, patient. But you should note in your release paperwork that Willful early termination of medical services releases this hospital and its parent company, ZHC, from legal liability should your condition persist or worsen outside of our care. Additionally, all tests and medical data from your visit will be shared with our standard partners to help improve our services and offerings and to keep the price affordable. I am further required to inform you that this visit has expended the last of your year's governmentally mandated healthcare credits. Lastly, you will be required to provide payment or proof of private insurance for any further visits for routine or emergency medical care. Please take care to fill out all forms thoroughly and accurately, and do have a nice day. Your medical billing makes me glad I'm synthetic. You should look for more paying journalism work before you get shot again. Before we leave, we should look for Dr. Fairlight's assistant, Leon Decker. Talk to them again. I'm more fond of radio myself. Hello, the name's Leon Decker. It's a pleasure to meet you. Fairlight messaged ahead that I needed to pass one of his cards on to you. Here. Thanks for taking your time with him. He really gets in one of his moods when the chair's getting fixed. The last gala he organized was full of unsavory types. He's probably happy to help folks whose pockets aren't deeper than their thoughts. Yeah, boss said you'd have a few for me. I'm not really supposed to answer anything too private, but <laughs> take your best shot. Oh, uh, mostly gopher work, to be honest. 
started when I was just out of the military. I was looking for a gig from someone who wouldn't care that I was an army rat. North Korea made that hard. The old man pays me to guard his life, run a few errands for him, and play substitute arm candy at most of the charity galas. Not terribly exciting, but I've already had enough excitement to last me another 30 years. You think sitting in that chair all day is very entertaining? You know, the old man's talked to me about the things he used to do in his glory days. I'm sure he told you about when he was the head of some big companies. He was cold, ambitious, and took down anyone with half a mind to get in his way. I think once he aged, he realized how lonely that kind of life can be. Helping people is the only way he can feel like he's still doing something. But hey, what do I know? I just spend all my time with him. Probably not as exciting as you hope. I grew up in Montana on a family farm. I didn't have my pa's farm hands, so I joined the military as soon as I could, like my grandpaps. Came home looking to do something a whole lot quieter for the rest of my life. I didn't know at the time how boring quiet could be. <laughs> but hey, I'll take it over getting shot at. No problem. I'll be around if you know where to look. You have a good day now. Well, we're free to leave. Why not head back home first, yes? I'm sure you'd like the chance to shower, at least. For such a clean place, it sure seems to have left you feeling foul. You look good. If you're feeling up for it, we should go find Tomcat and tell them about what happened. They should still be waiting for us at Stardust. Let's not keep them waiting. Oh, by the way, while you were showering, I was able to replant your Crassula ovata. Don't forget to talk to it and give it some love. When I try talking to it, it doesn't even notice I'm there. Either way, our next move is Stardust. Ready to head out? see you back. What can I do for you? Yeah? It's a little slow tonight. Things pick up and I get pulled away. 
You should chat with my boyfriend, Gus. He's been running around all over Neo SF looking for new acts since he handles our talent. I think he missed being behind the counter. He does get a bit overwhelmed by the hustle and bustle, but he could run this bar with one hand tied behind his back if he wanted. <laughs> eh, that's what a ROM is for. I'm a people person, and that's what matters, right? I can just look up all that other stuff. Sure thing. Don't be a stranger. Sorry, I don't think we've met before. I'm Gus. You have a really cool ROM. How's Stardust treating you? Well, that's good, but we can do better than not bad. Let me know how we can help. Majid may not have a memory for mixed drinks, but he loves listening to his patrons' problems. You'll have to let me or him know if you need any help. We try to run a tight ship around here. Oh, there isn't much to tell, really. I came to Neo SF from Arizona to finally live somewhere more thrilling. Majid needed someone good with numbers to handle back of the house sort of stuff. So here I am. I didn't grow up in big cities like this, and I always loved listening to Majid's stories from the Bay. Everything is just so exciting. Hayden? Oh, you're who Majid mentioned before, huh? Oh, no, sorry. I've met him since he's a regular, but I've been out and about on business. Haven't seen him in weeks. I wish I could help more. Among other things, yes. I love live music, and I love trying to find young up-and-comers to play here. Sometimes they aren't the best, but the enthusiasm is what matters, I think. We've had a few bands and DJs actually get some national recognition after playing here, so we're starting to make a name among artists trying to break into the industry. Still, I have to do a lot of running around and auditioning to get acts that I think will do well. I've gotten very picky, but Majid lets me take my time. He knows it's for the best. Okay, I'm gonna get back to this, but don't feel bad if you need to interrupt me for something. Sure thing. Enjoy the bar. The trace amount of liquid left in their glass suggests the person was drinking. liquid left in their glass suggests the person was drinking. Don't bug people, please. You'll get us in trouble. Haven't I seen you at my tattoo parlor before? VIP's kind of full right now. Wait a bit. Double time? That's with you. Try not to take it personally. We have been through quite a lot since we last met. 
I think we're both still recovering. Sorry to hear it. You wanna tell me about it without spewing more fire? It took us too long to get back inside the apartment. We were too late. Not only was the data cache gone, but my home had been pillaged and destroyed too. Everything was wrecked. Shit. Well, I can't say I saw that one coming. I figured that they'd nab anything they needed the first time they hit the place. Huh. Any ideas who it could have been? The walls had been spray-painted with many grotesque human revolution slogans. It is possible that Hayden was targeted by the organization for his work at Parallax. While my development may have been a secret, he is rather well known for his work on virtual intelligence data. A layman would not understand the critical differences between myself and a VI. Nor do I think the average human revolution member would care to make the distinction. Equally likely, it is an effort to throw us off the trail of who's actually done this. Test leader. Hopefully, we'll be able to get to the bottom of this after interviewing him. Yannick Fairlat. Uh, when did you run into him? Oh, um, we were ambushed at the apartment and got hit with some kind of neural stunner. What? Are y'all okay? Yes. We made it to the nearby hospital, and Dr. Fairlight happened to be occupying the same room we were placed in. We had a discussion with him about Hayden's situation, then came here. Well, shit. Things sure are getting more serious than I first thought. Y'all need to keep a sharp eye out. Being attacked means the bastards know you're looking at I'm confident in our ability to push on. <laughs> Can't say I know much about the man. Fairlight always was a bit of a shut-in, even back when he ran System 1, his old company. He didn't make any more public appearances after the merger between them and Parallax, but he was still working with them for six or so years past that. Nowadays, he shows up in the news once in a blue moon for some charity thing or another. But, ugh, well, it's... It's all just rumor, but I've heard he holds a grudge about it hotter than the Clantons after the Earps. I'd take care to look this particular horse in the mouth real close if I was you. Good. Now to lighten the mood. While y'all were chasing your tails, I managed to find a way into the Parallax Network. Once I'm in, I should be able to dig out Hayden's personal info file easily enough, including anything related to him on all security clearance levels. If Parallax is anything on Hayden's situation, it'll be in there. Fantastic, Tomcat. I knew Hayden's faith in you was not misplaced. How long do you think it will take you? Well, that's where the rubber meets the road. Parallax actually has considerably better net security than the last time I cracked in. I'm gonna need physical access. I've got a good idea where a node for us to slice into is, but it ain't exactly in a nice part of town. In fact, police have basically wrote it off as a lost cause. <laughs> Not enough profit in it. I know Jess has some contacts in that area. She's that girl that chewed you a new rear when y'all first came here. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough sale, but she might be able to help y'all get in and out of that part of the city without ending up in a parts bin at an organ shop shop. You 
might not be able to tell, considering her viper's tongue and penchant for hitting the clubs harder than she's got any right to, but Jess is actually an attorney. She specializes in defending people in violation of the Human Protection Act and does almost all of her work pro bono. That's earned her a whole gaggle of pals amongst the hybrid community around here, as you might imagine. Ain't no one gonna cross her in that part of town. Black market hybridization ain't exactly HPA compliant, if you catch my drift. And none of them ever know when they might need her to defend them in court. Hey, we ain't got it that bad. I mean, at least our police force owns its own cell. I hear down in San Jose, the richer neighborhoods have actually started hiring the gangs to protect their places. <laughs> when even the rich folks can't get good police work, it's a sad state for everyone else. And the less said about LA, the better. Lots of spirit! I need a little time to get all my tools together to slice into Parallax's network, but y'all keep me updated. Maybe y'all get lucky and find that data cache too. But I, I ain't gonna count on it. Jess is still hanging around here at Stardust, but I saw her head over to the VIP room. It's hybrid night and she's a popular gal. <laughs> Just please remember to play nice or her friends will bump you something fierce. I'll send Jess a message letting her know that y'all are looking for some assistance and we'll see what happens. Sure thing, huh? I've got to head on out of here and get started on setting up the run. Just have turn, let me know when y'all are ready. Oh, I see Jess over there behind some ropes. Let's go over and say hi to her. Oh, hell no. I'm really trying to have a good time today, and the Human Revolution crud muffins have made that very hard for me. And your interrogation this morning took a bad day to worse. I asked around about you, Jerno, and I don't have anything to say to you. The last thing I need is you prodding at me without telling me your press. Besides, the VIP section is only for hybrids and friends on hybrid night, and no way am I vouching for you. Hey, Bouncer! You got a capital A asshole over here! You heard her. Let's go. How rude! She didn't even give us a chance to explain ourselves. We have to get back in there and try to be reasonable. Surely she will see the importance of our task once we've explained everything. But that bouncer probably won't let us back in. Perhaps we should try befriending someone nearby and convince them to vouch for us? It's a statistical long shot, but the worst case scenario shouldn't leave an excessive amount of physical damage. space will just delay our investigation. <laughs> the trace amount of liquid left in their glass suggests the person was drinking. Hey, 
Hey, good to see you back. What can I do for you? Sorry, it's being rented out for a private party tonight. Hybrid night. I try not to judge, but I don't think this is your crowd. What are you having? So many drinks these days. Drinktionary, the open alcoholopedia says. Oh, I got this, sweetie. Ha <laughs> Sometimes I think I'm just holding up the bar rather than running it. No, I just memorized all the drinks. You're better with the customers. This one is... Thanks, honey bear. Like what? So many drinks these days. Drinktionary, the open alcoholopedia said. Oh, I got this, sweetie. This one is. Rawr. Thank you, hun. Here you go. What I was planning on ordering. Well, at least keep me company while I drink it. I'm Caitlin. I'm usually a lot more sociable. Things have just been rough today. My brother's going through gene therapy. He still has to go in at least twice a week for health and maintenance. There are human revolution protesters outside the clinic, making it even harder for him. They're always outside, harassing anyone coming in. It's exhausting. No one else lives around here, so I'm kind of all he's got. But it's not a big deal. We'll be done with the main set of treatments in a few weeks, and we'll be free of them. I just feel bad for everyone else they're messing with. Thanks a lot. I'm lucky to have him. So, there's plenty of people here. What made you want to talk with me? Oh geez, this really is my favorite drink. I have to wake up early for class, but I'm at the club, so I guess I'm already too deep in. <laughs> Graphic design with a focus on advertising. I even get to do some local stuff. Trying not to brag, but the Zone 3 ad on the bar is totally my doing. I have some really good client relationships locally, and there's so many interesting people too, like you. Hey, it's been really nice talking to you, but I kind of feel like dancing now. You, you want to come with me to the VIP area in the back? I have some friends who might be over there. We can hang out with them. They'll like you. Sure, just let me know. Hey, good to see you back. What can I do for you? What are you having? Look up how to make that. Drinktionary, the open alcoholopedia says. Oh, I got this, sweetie. This one is.
Thank you, hon. Here you go. Not my style, Tiger. I like the good stuff. Good to see you back. What can I do for you? What are you having? Hey, hon, uh, what's in that one? This one is... Thank you, hon. Here you go. Well, look who has good taste. I'm Sylvan. What's a wet drink like yourself doing here? And no one just hangs out at Stardust. Well, thanks for the drink. The club is a little dead tonight, so it's nice to see a new face. You know anyone here? Oh, I don't know. There might be a few in here. I mean, I wouldn't want to toot my own horn too loudly, but I know how to have a good time. If that's what you're looking for, anyway. Well, make up your mind soon. Well, thanks for the drink, but I think I'm gonna play the room a little more. Maybe we'll run into each other again. Come with me to the VIP area in the back. I have some friends who might be over there. We can hang out with them. They'll like you. Great, let's go. Didn't I say to beat it? We're guests of Caitlin. She said we could join her. <sighs> All right, but it's on her if you can't stay out of trouble. Priority marked as urgent. Well, hope you come by again. Excellent. Sorry for making up the call. I'm still getting used to the whole subterfuge thing you humans do. However, we can take another run at having a conversation with Jess. We have a dragon to slay. Onward! <laughs> Due to a hybrid is walk up and try to pet them. I'm ashamed to say I've gone on a few assy spike benders in my time. This is exactly what I needed to get my mind off things. Huh? 
and you're back. You know, as soon as I first saw you, I hoped you'd be dropped like a bad packet off the mesh net and I'd never have to see you ever again. So, of course, I just got off the phone with Tomcat, practically begging me to help you out. You aren't so good at the long-term play thing, are you? You mean you don't stick both feet in your mouth every time you talk to a hybrid? Surprising! Let's just get one thing straight here. I'm only willing to talk to you because I owe Tomcat. I don't owe you shit! So if you want my help, you gotta do something for me. If you got a problem with that, tough. My neighborhood, my help, my rules. I need you to break up those human revolution protests. The ones at the Genus Clinic on Market Street. I'd like this handled with some stealth. Not that I expect you to know what discreet means. Either way, just get it done. I got clients in the middle of treatment cycles, and this media circus is making their lives difficult. That means it's making my life difficult. Let the bastards go march somewhere else. Like Washington. Not here. I'm just great. I'm peachy. My clients get harassed and beaten on the daily. I don't have the time or money to help them all. And I have jackasses like you bothering me on my one day off. So, you gonna braid my fur and we can talk about all our problems and boys we like? You want to help? Don't treat hybrids like animals for living out their lives. All of this isn't even a choice for some of us. You want to know what my deal is? You really want me to get sappy? Skin cancer. Stage three. My prognosis was so advanced that the doc said my bones were already lost. So I had to do something drastic. Completely restart my biology from scratch. You ever seen someone with a severe gene splice? From something freaky, like an insect? That's where hypertech began, you know. Where my therapy started. You can't imagine what it's like to have children cry from just looking at you. When people just see you and sprint the other direction. I had police following me everywhere I went. I lost my apartment. I lost my dignity. Eventually, I was lucky enough to qualify for the cute kitty cat cure to override the expression of the chitin. It changed my life. I have my job and purpose because of it. The fur doesn't scare the rest of the world too much to let me exist. Better an otaku's fluffy wet dream than the monster from a horror VR drama from Japan. My mom still can't look at me straight. Not to get even mushier, but as a kid, she would sing me a song as she counted all the freckles on my face. She hasn't let that go. You know how your folks look at you when they figure out you finally had sex or did crash? It's like that. All the time. Oh, now you're sorry. You haven't even heard the worst part yet. The amount of gene therapy I underwent exceeded the limit that the Human Protection Act allows for procreation. So yeah, the government freaking spayed me, if it all wasn't hilariously dark enough. First I'm too ugly to look at, now I'm too screwed up to breathe. Saving my own life forfeited my right to be a person. The Human Protection Act. Ha! Apparently protecting humans doesn't include me. Only genotypicals could live in this city and truly think they're the ones who need some protection the most. In any case, I had some clean eggs frozen, and we'll whip them out whenever I'm ready. Except keeping that shit on ice costs. And my insurance decided to just not pay up, due to the elective nature of my feline gene therapy. So I took those bastards to court, and won. 
and I've been doing the same thing for everybody else ever since. So, there you go. I got cancer, super science fixed me up and left me a freak, and then the government sterilized me so I wouldn't go out and make more little monsters. And everyone else gets to be the winner by default. Happy now? How's your savior complex doing? This is getting you off? Yeah, I am. Now show me that you're on the right side. I'll be watching. Break up those protests, and then we'll talk. All right, it sounds like we know what we need to do next. Let's go to Market Street and break up those protests for Jess. Protesters. I have to admit that I still find the vandalism of Hayden's apartment puzzling. The protests themselves have been entirely peaceful so far. And the human revolution, regardless of the flimsy philosophical ground they stand on, are not a group known for projecting their ideology through unlawful means. The more I research them, the more I have to admit to the statistical conclusion that we're either dealing with a deceptive covert operation scenario, or less likely, a radical splinter group. Still, I doubt it will hurt to ask around. Brian Mulberry is there in the center. Fairlight said he was the one to talk to, and my mesh searches confirm that he is the leader of the local chapter of the Human Revolution Organization. He's a bit player on the national scene, but he seems charismatic and camera conscious from the video clips I've reviewed. Perhaps we could use that to our advantage? are terrible. We shouldn't go too deep into the crowd. Let's talk to more visible folks.
gene therapy is a long and uncomfortable process. If you'd like to look into splicing for yourself, let's save that for after our investigations. there! Would you like to hear about the dangers of our country's unchecked use of genetic modification? I have pamphlets! Here, take one! Um, the press hasn't been so kind to us lately. They try to feign neutrality, but just look at the way we get covered. It's disgraceful. But no matter. I'll show good faith that you are after what all of us here are after. The truth. We in the human revolution just want people to really think about the technology and bodily enhancements they use every day and decide if they're actually better off. What questions can I answer for you? We hope to educate the public about the dangers of rapid technological advancements. We want to warn the country away from thoughtlessly accepting every scientific discovery we make before it's too late. We used to say that splitting the atom would surely bring about the end of humankind. But now we're changing the very things that make us human. Our biology, with nothing to ensure our safety. The revolution we're after is humanity as a whole making the decision to remain as we were created and return to how we lived before genetic science put us on the wrong course. This world is Icarus flying too close to the sun. It's only a matter of time before our arrogance becomes our demise. Just because we can doesn't mean we should. Genetic modification is one of the most dangerous sciences we've ever fooled around with. It's playing God on the highest order and threatens to unseat what humanity is altogether. Cybernetics is a dangerous path as well, selling off pieces of ourselves bit by bit for mechanical strength and resilience. But at least a brain-controlled android is still a human brain, even if in a metal box. There is a reason Congress enacted laws prohibiting highly modified hybrids from breeding. Now, I do not fault the individuals who come here for treatment, many of whom are disabled and deathly ill. If you ask me, genus isn't the kind of therapy they all need. However, we must take a stand against the medical research industry that would have us cast aside our humanity for their miracles. At our core, we are a peaceful movement and seek only to convince people to vote according to the truths we reveal to them. The human revolution has faith that American democracy will win out in the end. It falls to us to make sure that people are informed about the daunting and confusing technologies they put their senseless faith into every day. On a personal level, we would like to exhort every individual to try and live more simply and reject any gadget or medicine that would make us less than we are. We have reports of a break-in at the home of a parallax researcher with human revolution graffiti at the scene. Ah, well, the human revolution certainly does not condone such actions at all. We're a peaceful organization, and threatening people is not going to earn us hearts and minds. But... Off the record, some of our younger members can be a bit overzealous, as any hot-headed teenager tends to be. I'll look into this matter personally, and if I discover that any of our younger members were involved, they'll be turned into the proper authorities. Now, not to cut this too short, but I need to get back to my people. I hope I've answered all your questions. You clearly missed doing real journalism. I'm impressed. I 
think you're starting to get back into the hard-boiled investigative journalist thing. Hopefully we'll get lucky enough to turn up a new lead, even if this one didn't pan out like we'd hoped. I think he was considerably less deluded than my searches on the mesh net had led me to believe. Oh, well, he didn't appear to be lying, but I'm not equipped with interrogation sensors. You have more experience with this than I do. Do you think he was telling the truth? Continue observing you and try to discern how to read people as we question them. A useful skill I find myself sorely lacking in. Lead on. And don't forget, we're still here to actually break up these protests. Let's see if we can't figure out a solution together. Make sure to look around and think carefully. I'm sure we'll find something. Inside there, or we could at least get a drink. Interesting. A RSU climate control ROM model 6703, if I am not mistaken. Apparently, it is owned by the Hassi Bar based on this identification marker. This kind of ROM requires an RFID key to access it. It appears to be owned by the nearby Hassi Bar. Let's not. Two's company. Three's a cloud. the basic Passy flavors, but their specialty menu has other Passy bar exclusive drinks like Sassy Passy, Poison Passy, Classy Passy, or a Grassy Passy shot.
No time to rest anymore, sleepyhead. We have our mission. Let's get to it. Full steam ahead. did more than just say thank you. It looks really expensive. Anyway, what can I get you? A drink I can do. And I guess I have some time to talk. The protesters outside the clinic are driving off a lot of my regular customers. Filling up my bathroom too, jerks. What do you want to know? Oh, I never introduced myself, did I? I'm Ramona. I guess there isn't much to tell. I went to college, got a degree, took out a loan and bought this place. Now I spend my days trying to find enough time and money to sustain my VR drama addiction. My priorities are justice, cute stuff, and magical girls, in that order. What else? I pretty much don't leave the store. Look, they've got the right to protest, but I don't have to like it. Once they're done with the hybrids, I know they'll be coming for me next. So I'll be voting appropriately. And if I unclog one more toilet because I'm an entitled bigoted jerk face I will lose my goddamn mind oh you can't tell I've got a cybernetic arm and leg thanks to an auto cap crash when I was a kid I also got neural links for VR interfacing if it was up to those dinosaurs I'd be stuck in a wheelchair right now or worse depending on how far back they want to push our medical technology it's already illegal for me to have a rocket-powered fist. What more do they want? Sorry. Attack and speak. I just mean he's really cute and lovable. And you kind of want to hug him forever, you know? A lot of otaku come around here. Probably because I own the place. I'm used to being able to shoot my mouth off and not explain all the jargon. Yeah, I know it's a bit out of fashion, but I'm a history buff. The past really gives context to stories of the present. You know what I mean? I've been to Tokyo twice already. The old otaku resists the new culture of the saishi in the same way their parents refuse to give up cassette tapes. Sorry, the Saiba Shibito, the Cyber Dead. In the early 21st century, Japan had an epidemic of chronic shut ins, and the rise of direct link virtual reality only made that worse. Suddenly, people weren't just refusing to leave their rooms, they were refusing to leave their heads. But as the technology got better, the Saishi were the first to figure out how to use their own brains to sculpt cyberspace. Computers are good at thinking in straight lines, 
but the human brain is capable of so much more. The best virtual landscapes, the most real VR dramas and games, are created by the Saichi. Now, even if an earthquake or a meteor or whatever leveled Japan, they still have Neo Tokyo built on the VR net. But enough babbling. If you're interested, I'm sure you could find more out on the mesh or use an induction helmet to visit Neo Tokyo yourself. It's a trip, especially for you. It does a good job, huh? Yeah, that's fine. Well, technically, it's property of Hassie Holdings. We spent some mints on it, but the rest of the block helps pitch in for maintenance costs since I usually set it to patrol the whole area. You should check it out when we do Christmas in July. It can cover the whole street in snow, as long as it's cloudy enough to keep the sun off. Sort of like today. Sorry, but that thing cost me way too many credits to let just anyone poke at it. I would need to see some serious credentials before I let you mess with it. You know, enough to make sure you can afford to replace it if you break it. Otherwise, no touching. Okay, enjoy your drink and let me know if you need anything else. This rum serves up the hassy. Dr. Yannick Fairlight. I've heard of him. Super rich guy? Used to own System 1? Why are you giving me his card? He's getting on in years, and it would be useful for when he goes out and about. That's why we wanted to see it before. Uh... Yeah, okay. I guess you can take a peek. Don't bust it, though. I scanned this card, and I swear if you break my ROM, I'll be calling your boss. Here's the RFID key to access it. Thank you. This will surely be useful for our needs. Shall we go check it out? different climate control settings. Maybe we could make things a little more festive. Christmas is my favorite season. Should I switch it to snow mode? People, I for one didn't bring any winter wear. Let's call it a day for now. Excellent work! While I still have doubts about the moral superiority of using subterfuge to disperse a protest, we at least accomplished our goal peacefully. To be frank, considering how the human revolution is clearly working against my personal interests, I won't waste many clock cycles puzzling that ethical quandary out. Hmm. Might I draw your attention to those youths over yonder? Counterculture clothing, obvious bad attitudes, and graffiti paraphernalia. Those could be our suspects who damaged my home in the name of revolution.
I'm just making an observation. I see one of them is wearing a new set of Bang B-Stroke 129 headphones. Perhaps you can do some research for a review? Oh no, they've noticed our attentions. Come along, maybe we can catch them. We'll never catch them on foot. Hold on, I'm calling for an auto cab of our own. I know it seems a great deal of trouble for such a tenuous lead, but I have a hunch about them. The wicked flee when no man pursueth. Uh, the auto cab is estimated to take five minutes to arrive. We'll never be able to engage in pursuit fast enough to catch up to them. Perhaps we should call Tomcat. Maybe they can do some bit of techno wizardry and stop that cab. Excellent. Hold on while I connect us. Howdy, folks. How's the search for the data cache going? Actually, that's what we're calling about, Tomcat. We may have located the perpetrators, but they eluded us and are making their escape in an auto cab. We attempted to use a cab of our own to tail them, but it hasn't arrived and they're getting away. Can you hack the cab and stop it? Oof. No can do, little guy. Security on those cabs is tight, and the dang thing will shut down its external net connection long before I get in. Unless... Oh, I have an idea. Sit tight for just a sec. Alright, I went faster than spin on a skillet. I did a job a few years back and had to break into the city's central traffic network. Do me a favor and don't ask why. The back door I drilled into that long ago is still wide open. I'm logging into the traffic management system now. Wait. Oh, shit. They may not have fixed that back door, but they did install a new counter-intrusion VI. Oh, the damn thing is hot on my tail. Gotta take care of this VI. I'm gonna need the two of you to handle the traffic system. Turn, I'm passing control to you. Hold tight. I'm gonna be doing some two sets of hands on one keyboard kind of hacking. Just push on the map and loading up on Turn's face. Sorry, Turn. Ooh, they're on the move. Here's how it works. Use your display map to keep track of their cab and redirect it back to you. You can trigger traffic nodes at intersections so the cab thinks the streets are blocked off. Do it right, and you should be able to steer them right back to you. You just gotta make sure to stop them where you're at, or else they'll just go running off on foot. I'll put a goal marker on the map for you. You can trigger any node on the map at any time, so plan ahead. I'd say you'll have time for two moves every time they hit an intersection. If they go off the map, though, you'll lose them. Block every road that leads out of our grid, and watch the places with three exits you can't all cover in one go-around. Just hurry. I don't know how long I'm gonna be able to keep this V out from messing on the carpet, and once I kill the connection, this old trick is over. I'll tap into the cab control node they're currently arriving at. Our top priority is to ensure they cannot leave the area Tomcat's given us access to. I'll mark the southern exit as closed first. We only have time to block off two routes before the auto cab will make a decision and move. We shouldn't block the route back here. We have to stop them where we can catch them. Once you get them back here, press the big button on top of the map to shortwire the auto cab. 
be careful. If you stop their ride anywhere else, they'll just run off. What do you think our next move should be? control nodes in the area at any time. Plan ahead and we should be able to get them. Got it? them now. Let's go! I'm gonna go stop them, and then we can interrogate the miscreants. What the hell do you want? Who do you think you're messing with, huh? You ain't got nothing on us, and if you don't get out of my way, I'll mess you up! What do you think we should do? We haven't observed them doing anything illegal, and we could potentially make this go over smoothly. Or, we could share news of this encounter with Lexi before things get out of hand. These two seem agitated already, and it may be best to make sure they're handled by the appropriate authorities. Those are the options I deduced. Questions or cops? It's up to you. How do you want to do this? We just have a few questions for you, sirs. If you'd be so kind as to give us a few minutes of your time. Did you not hear what I... Maybe we should just answer their questions. I mean... Didn't do anything wrong, right? Um, right! We ain't got nothing to hide! You a cop? Cause if you ain't, we ain't got nothing in the bag! We're newbie street artists. 
These are the tools of our trade. These are all above board and legal. We just got done making a piece for a client. That's right! We're artists! Running? Who is I running from? You calling me a coward? Uh, I don't think that's what they were insinuating. Er, right! We just got places to get to, and gotta go fast! You're holding us up! Assuming you can misdirect us with blustery words and feigned ignorance. I've matched the hues of those paints in the patterns of the bottom of your shoes with 95% accuracy to the scene of Hayden Weber's apartment. Now tell us what you are doing there and why you stole Hayden's data cache. Now you're accusing us of stealing? Why I oughta... Chad, I think they're on to us. Maybe we just answer their questions so they don't go to the cops? Damn it, Oliver! I told you I'm Starfucker now! I only went along with this because you said we would go to a movie afterwards. I don't even care about this human revolution stuff. Just because you're dad... Don't talk about my dad. Fine. Whatever. We'll answer your friggin' questions. Aw, oh, man. No big reason. I mean, he's a big hotshot researcher at Parallax, right? We heard a rumor his place was empty. Who's gonna pass up a sweet target like that? We don't need any more of this tech shit. Like your lippy Rom over there. to do with that we just sliced the door controls and trashed the place wasn't nobody there i told you we didn't steal nothing be quiet chad i don't want to go to juvie here you can have it okay well thanks for giving it back Yeah, whatever. Just get out of my way. We hope you find that Hayden guy. And we're real sorry. We weren't trying to hurt anyone. All right. Let's go catch that movie. Great. Can we get dinner first? Sure. Whatever you want. I deactivated snow mode. Incoming call from Tomcat. Hey, folks. Jess just called and told me she has a clear way to the access node. She'll get you inside, and I'll walk you through connecting me so I can access the parallax network. That should help our hunt. Did you get the data cache? Yes, those punks happen to have it. Oh, great. We don't have time to worry about it right now, though. Go to Stardust and drop it off with Majid for me, okay? He'll hold it to pass on to me once I get there. I managed to trigger an alert within Parallax's network security, and they're gonna be moving their logs from one secure server to another. I need y'all in place of that access node before they do. No time for lollygagging. No problem, Tomcat. We'll make our way there directly after we return to Stardust. We can worry about the weather ROM's malfunction later. Let's go. Our mission for Jess is done. Don't bug it. It already seems to be in a stormy mood. I told you 
jerks not to break my romp. Now I can't get it to stop snowing. Those protesters are gone, but I'm still not gonna have any customers with it freezing like this. This hassy hot cup is the perfect thing to warm me up. Snow out of nowhere? I guess I'll wait it out in here. Wow, look at it out there. So magical. Uh, don't think I've forgiven you, you dingus. I better go get some hassy hot cups going. Well, all's well that ends well, right? check the mesh for common issues with the mode selector on the 6703 ROM unit and forward the solutions to the Hassy bar owner. I'm certain she'll be able to get it turned off after the customer rush. Hey there, I go by Night Witch. My name has some pretty cool history behind it. We're some badass ladies who'll bomb hellfire on anyone. hang out at Stardust, but they don't serve food, so I come here for Hassy Hot Cups during the day. with him first, like Tomcat asked. All right, Tomcat asked me to take that off your hands and pass it on to them later. Thanks for getting it to me. I won't pester you about what it is. I know things are always very hush-hush with Tomcat. I'll make sure they get it later today. Excellent. Thank you. Hey, good to see you back. What can I do for you? Alrighty, have fun now. Enjoy yourself. Hey there. Give me a few minutes, okay? You again? All right, I'll let you in. But you better stay out of trouble. I love vintage game experiences. Have you ever heard of Overblood? 
I kind of feel like dancing now. Want to join me? Hey, I heard from my friends down the street that the protesters are gone. Must have been you, huh? All right, then. I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt and return the favor. Tomcat said that if you got to an old abandoned access node, you might be able to find out what happened to Hayden. I called up a buddy who's on night shift for Parallax tonight. He can buzz you in. But if anything happens, you broke in. This puts us at about even. Don't think about drawing any more debits for a while. Good luck. Keep me out of your shit. This is the place Tomcat said we should head to. Unassuming and quiet. I'll be honest, I don't think I would be in this section of the city without Jess giving us the all clear. The crime statistics are quite alarming, so let us get done with our errand here and move on to safer ground. Coward, I resent the accusation. After all, I didn't see you arguing against doing that favor for Jess in the first place. But I don't feel like debating the merits of being prudent with you. Tomcat is waiting for us, and maybe we can wrap this whole investigation up once and for all. You know, right after we found Hayden's apartment in such disarray, I started looking into graffiti and street art more thoroughly. I have never much considered doing any of it myself, but it seems like an interesting avenue to pursue once I move beyond abstract expressionism. The simpler tags, visual shoutings of identity and existence, they exhibit a feeling I can sympathize with. But it's these larger pieces, riots of color and chaos, that really interest me. Petty vandalism is beneath me, but there are other avenues for the practice. For example, did you know that Los Angeles, in the mid-2030s, legalized the tagging of mural-style street art on any building without requiring permission from the owner or city? It was chaos of the highest degree for a while, but now the place is truly remarkable. <coughs> Perhaps I will visit once this is all done with. You can be really insensitive, you know that? But never mind. Let's find that access node.
You know, right after we found Hayden's apartment in such disarray, I started looking into graffiti and street art more thoroughly. I have never much considered doing any of it myself, but it seems like an interesting avenue to pursue once I move beyond abstract expressionism. The simpler tags, visual shoutings of identity and existence, they exhibit a feeling I can sympathize with. But it's these larger pieces, riots of color and chaos, that really interest me. Petty vandalism is beneath me, but there are other avenues for the practice. For example, did you know that Los Angeles, in the mid-2030s, legalized the tagging of mural-style street art on any building without requiring permission from the owner or city? It was chaos of the highest degree for a while, but now the place is truly remarkable. Perhaps I will visit once this is all done with. Ah, I hadn't even noticed. Do you have much experience with gonzo journalism yourself, reporting after or during direct participation? If you do end up writing on this experience, Whatever you produce would be the very definition of it. You're too close to be objective now, and you're a key subject in this event. It doesn't seem to be your usual style, but you couldn't go another route at this point, and you're in the clear as you didn't instigate the situation. Hmm, I've never had much interest in the practice, but spending so much time around you has taught me to look at events in a different light. Perhaps only because I can verify your personal experiences as fact. Sorry, I'm rambling again, aren't I? <sighs> and we're on a schedule. I don't even want to think about this. What if we don't find Hayden? What if we do? My memory processors are shot from the stress of the past day. It's already taken a toll on me. But never mind. Let's find that access node. Let's find Hayden. This is the door to an apartment building. It's not the access node. Don't! The access node is next door to this building. That's the wrong place. Don't wake the Nabots! Did I say Nabots? I meant neighbors. Sorry, I'm really tired. Besides, this is the wrong door. This is the door to the access node that Tomcat told us about. We need to use the buzzer to get inside. The guard isn't actually here. You need to press the buzzer on the door to get access. Alex Lock, AN-19 security. Hello? Yes, can I help you? That's right. 
Good. Be quick. Don't touch anything. Got it? This conversation never happened. And you're on your own if you get caught out there. I hope you find what you're looking for. This is it. Let's go inside and I'll call Tomcat. This place doesn't look like it's had any maintenance in years. I hope the systems are still functional. Oh, I forgot you can't see in darkness. Maybe that switch over there adjusts the lighting. Tomcat is pinging us, forwarding video and audio. Howdy! Y'all at the access node? I'm set to slice in once Turn makes physical access. Of course, Tomcat. Just walk me through how to connect myself, and I'll give you the necessary system permissions to use me as an interface. Just patch yourself into the Lynx terminal down there, and I should be able to get started. Connecting wirelessly to it... now! Permissions granted. Uh, please be careful in there. Don't worry, doll. I'm an old hand at this. You won't notice a thing. One sec... Oh, shoot. Y'all have a bit more to do before I can get the info we need. This system's still running on old cassettes, and the recall slot is empty. Can't call up Hayden's info file without it. There should be a cassette on the opposite side of the wall we can overwrite with the recall program. Pretty sure all that one was used for was phone monitoring. You know, from back when phone networks were separate from data networks? I swear, y'all, I just turned 22. Anyways, we need to move that cassette across the room to access the records. Figure out how to do that, and hit me back up when you've done it. According to this poster, the data cassettes can only be moved by using the links panel to control the utility arm. Wires, be careful. What the heck's going on down there? The node just lit up with all sorts of VI activity. Did you just... You connected to Parallax's maintenance network? Why would you go online? Now we'll never be able to use this node again. Oh, get to cracking.
Nice job! I'm gonna put some more pressure on them to move the data now, and we'll see if we can't slurp it right out of this network trunk. You would have thought that someone would have noticed and decommissioned this access node when the neighborhood went to hell, but... This mouse is happy to play while the cat is away. Way back when I was a youngin', when I first hacked into Parallax's network, I mostly did it to make a point, yeah? They were just about to launch the MeshNet system, and I wanted to show the whole darn world that their security had more holes in it than Swiss cheese. Of course, I wasn't too shy about poking in a few more holes of my own devising while I was there. After putting in some more tricky software backdoors, I went ahead and deleted this access node off the maintenance schedule. Then, I reassigned the guy who was supposed to keep an eye on it to a different location. They were in the process of buying up a whole gaggle of these nodes in preparation to set up a private network for themselves. All just to use for the MeshNet launch. Maybe a little too confident of them. Most of the software holes have been patched out as they've upgraded their network, but this old place is just as forgotten as I left it. I've been targeting one of their data centers with a botnet-driven DDoS attack, hitting every port into its network that I can find. Ain't likely to do much, but toss in a few attempts to crack the firewall and their VIs are shitting bricks. It's standard procedure for them to move their sensitive data to a different data center in case the attacker actually gets in. Make enough noise and it'll scare them enough into taking some defensive action, which is where we want them. The files are more vulnerable in transit. Now you'll just hold tight. I'll be done with this lickety split. Hmm. Surveillance camera footage. Oh god. Oh turn. I'm so sorry. What is it, Tomcat? What did you find? He's gone, Turin. Of course he's gone, Tomcat. That's why we're here. Shit. I, I mean, he's gone, gone, Turin. Hayden is... Hayden is dead. Well, that obviously isn't right, Tomcat. Why would they kill him? Can you send me the relevant files? You must have missed something. I, I don't think you should see it, but if you're sure. Parallax, uh, had security cam footage from the hallway outside Hayden's apartment encrypted on their network. Just a short clip. It looks like... Hayden started to struggle with a couple of big dudes when they broke through the door, and one of them shot him. I also found some chatter about it on some darknet channels. It wasn't a kidnapping. Somebody went there to murder him. I'm so damn sorry. about this new scenario. If you'll excuse me. Sh 
Should you follow them? <sighs> if you say so. Yeah, I'm gonna keep digging through this data until they kick me out of the system. I'll try to find some kind of lead on why this whole thing started in the first place. Maybe I can find something out about who killed Hayden and why Parallax has a copy of the footage. It ain't much of a silver lining, but we have the answer on Hayden's fate. Maybe it's time to call it quits. Anyway, I'll talk to you later.